Hey everyone, and I'm back with another video, and I'm going to try and do this one really quick. Because when the ROG Scope first turned up, it actually appeared to be quite nice. I mean, it's quite hard to get an RGB keyboard wrong. But when you dig a little deeper into it, it's not as good as you'd first expect. So, straight away, one of the first things that they all shout about is the fact that the uh, control key is a bit bigger, which means that you've got less, um, and they've also made, sorry, they've made the Windows key a bit smaller, so you've got less worry about hitting it. They've also made the Shift key a bit smaller as well. But that only really makes uh, any difference if you're using an American layout keyboard, because for us Brits, it's not really that much different. Uh, so with that side of it, Americans, you're probably really going to like it, or American keyboard users, you're probably going to really like it, but for all you Brits out there, it's not a great deal different. Uh, other, something else, is the one of the funniest and one of the best things, it's got a stealth mode at the top. And if you smash that, whatever's on the screen disappears, and then it all goes minimised and you just go straight back to your desktop. Now one thing that you are going to have to go careful of is to make sure that the uh, when you have a look at the tabs at the bottom of your screen, with those tabs at the bottom of your screen, don't have the ones that are larger because otherwise you'll be able to see what um, Google tabs that you've had open and programs and the like. But it could be kind of handy for those of you out there that may have been, I don't know, shopping for a gift for a loved one, for example. But I have the slightest thing, it's going to end up being briefly determined as the FAP button. Now what they have done with the F numbers at the top is actually really nice and they've reversed it. So rather than having to hit FM to do anything other than an F key number, it's like that straight away. F1, 2, 3 and 4 will still just work, but then all of the rest, they're kind of reversed. So all your media keys have just got an instant switch. Now that's, that is brilliant for the bulk of users and there is an override button so you can do an FN lock. If you're an overclocker though, you are going to want to use that FN lock because of when you come out of the BIOS and you want to do F10 save, you're going to need to either remember to press the FN first or hit the FN lock one. The FN lock, I would kind of leave locked if you're going to be in and out of the BIOS doing a lot of stuff. Now that's all well and good. Now uh, the, the design of the keyboard itself actually does look really nice. You've got kind of a sandblasted edge one side and then you've got the kind of the rog brushed kind of effect the other side and that does look really nice. But then basically is this is where it gets complicated. If you're someone that literally wants to plug the keyboard in, change the colour, get it set up and use it, then you're going to go to uh, your Asus Aura software, assuming that you've got a system that is going to be have a lot more Asus stuff in it anyway, and the keyboard's not going to pop up in it. So then you have to go to the uh, ROG Armory 2 download tab, download that, which is 190 megabyte, just to change the colours on your keyboard. Now I can't help but think that if you just want to change the colours, it should pop up in Aura. And you should only really need to use the Armoury software if you want to use all the macros and all of that sort of stuff. And then when we talk about macros, if you do save a macro, it's all well and good, it's quite easy, you can do it in the software, but then when you save it at the end of it, you're kind of, you're there and you, you're like, all right, so I've made a macro, how do I assign it? And you then need to tick back to the keyboard tab and then select the button that you want to assign it to. And I can't help but feel that it should have been a little bit more slipstreamed and there might have been a pop-up, a sign key or something like that, just to make your life a little bit more easier. Um, and my overwhelming thoughts with this keyboard is it's quite hard to get a Cherry keyboard wrong, especially a Cherry RGB keyboard. Now, each of the keys actually cost quite a lot of money. I can't remember whether it's $2 or $3. And then by the time you add it up to the full keyboard, uh, it actually gets quite expensive. And that's why they're all north. Normally, if it's a full proper Cherry keyboard, all north of £100 or $100. And this one comes in in the UK at £150 which is actually quite expensive for a Cherry keyboard. Now, again, I can't help but feel like it's, uh, it's an okay Cherry keyboard because it works and it does what you kind of want. But if it was me and I'd paid £150 for this, 
it does kind of feel like the software is kind of letting it down a bit. It's not, other than the F keys at the top being reversed, and the stealth key is kind of funny for the, you know, the times that you may actually want to use it. It may stop you getting caught watching something that you shouldn't have been. But if you've actually got time to let go of whatever you had hold of and hit that button, I think you may have missed your chance to cover up the whatever you had hold of in the first place. Um, so, yeah, I don't know. It's it's definitely a novel feature, but it's going to depend on you know why you needed it in the first place. And I'm trying to be kind of candid about the way I'm talking about it, but I think you'll get what I'm trying to say. But my overall feeling with the scope is it is a well-made RGB keyboard, but there are so many well-made Cherry RGB keyboards out there that even come in cheaper than this. And the fact that you're linked into using a completely separate bit of software to your uh, Asus Aura software I don't then understand why it's going to be any different from you buying a uh, keyboard from another brand because it's just, it, you know, it's forcing you into using something else. And I think that for the absolute basic options, Asus should have had it pop up in the normal software. The mouse does that I'm using, for example, that literally came up in the software instantly. And I think the keyboard should have done as well. Now, this may only be a minor thing, but when you have so many, of very, very similar keyboards out there, I think it was worth kind of bringing it up a little bit more. And I, it's, I think that it's like a very well-made cake and then the software is the icing on the top has ruined it in reality. Um, so it's definitely something that could be fixed, but considering our past experiences with Asus when I've picked them up with software, with their AIOs, for example, taking thermal sensors from different parts of the board and not actually the CPU. And then that then was uh, linked into like the power supplies. And you know what I mean? It, it, it's something that recently they've not been chasing their tails to keep uh, making the products better. So it leaves me uh, with the thought in my mouth that, uh, with the thought in my head, I should say, and the, the taste in my mouth, that if they didn't fix those, I doubt that they're going to fix these. In my own eyes, I would actually look at this, look at the 150 pounds, look at, beyond, once you've gone past the tippity-tappity keyboard side of it, I think the actual, like, living with it is going to be quite frustrating. And you'd have to invest quite a bit of time into getting it the exact the way that you wanted it. But if you're one of those people that just want to put it on your desk, change the colours and use it, I think you'd probably be better off getting something else.